When I was in high school, even just studying for 30 minutes without getting distracted was a real challenge. There were so many more interesting things that I'd rather be doing like scrolling through social media or watching YouTube videos. I could start my studying at 9am but I'd find myself still watching YouTube 3 or 4 hours later and I hadn't done even a single minute of studying. So fast forward a few years when I started studying at university. I slowly started implementing study techniques and habits into my studying that allowed me to increase the amount of studying that I was able to do in a single day. So by the time I graduated from university, I was able to study for about 14 hours relatively easily. And that's 14 hours of studying with complete focus and complete concentration. So in this video, I'm going to go through a few things that I implemented into my life that helped me build the self-discipline and the ability to essentially keep procrastination at bay because I know it's a, a huge problem that a lot of you guys are having. I know because you tell me every single day in the comments and I get emails and I get DMs on social media every day asking for advice on how to fight off procrastination and study for that little bit longer without getting distracted. So this is for you guys. And a quick important note, I do not advise studying for 14 hours a day, seven days a week. For the vast majority of us, including myself, it's just not sustainable and it's certainly not healthy. But 14 hours every now and then, especially maybe before exams, then that's okay. And I'm going to repeat what I write in the video description of most of these videos because I think this subject isn't talked about enough on motivational channels on YouTube, including my own. My videos are made to motivate and inspire, but the message is not to study for 16 hours a day, sleep for two hours a night and have no social life. You'll eventually lead yourself to exhaustion. And that's not the point. Live your life, be happy. You're only young once, but when it is time to study, then give it everything you have. Push yourself, seek challenges, face your fears, but always keep your mental and physical health in check. Health should come first before everything, and I really mean that, above everything. Tip number one, plan your day in advance. And we all know how easy it is to slip into procrastination mode. It only takes a split second during the day where you don't know what task you're going to do next. And at that very moment, at that very moment, your natural reaction without even thinking about it is to pull out your phone and start browsing through Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or even YouTube. And YouTube is worse because most social medias are specifically designed for short form content like Instagram. You have short stories and images that don't take that long to browse through, just a few seconds to browse through. And TikTok videos that are shorter than 60 seconds. But when you open YouTube, in 2019, a study by Statista.com reported the average YouTube video is 11.7 minutes long. So quite often when people open YouTube, they waste a lot more time on average compared to other social medias. So the idea here is to have the things that you need to do, the tasks that you need to do, write them out the day before. The most important tasks should come first in the morning. And those are the tasks that if you complete them, they will have the biggest positive impact on your productivity. It follows the Pareto principle named after Vilfredo Pareto, who developed the concept in 1896, which states that roughly 80% of consequences come from 20% of causes. And my favorite example of the 80-20 Pareto principle is when you do group work at school or university, and it's very likely that 20% of the group members are producing 80% of the work. And let me know in the comments if you can relate to that because I certainly can. Uh, another example, this might be the grade you achieve in an exam, will probably be as a result of 20% of your studying. So that 20% might be when you were directly preparing for that exam, such as when you were studying past papers or consolidating your lecture notes, for example. And the other less important 80% of your studying could have been made up of reading textbooks or completing homework assignments. So bear this in mind when you're preparing in advance the tasks that you need to do the next day. The tasks will have the biggest outcomes should come first and the lesser important tasks should come last. Also make sure that your day is scheduled with long, short, easy and difficult tasks. So the more difficult and more important tasks should be scheduled at the beginning of the day when you have more energy and you can concentrate far better. During the day when you have less concentration, and that's different for everyone, for, for some people it's the middle of the day and I know between 1 and 2 I usually drop in energy and then it bounces back at 3 or 4pm, and for some people it's the evening and night time, 
But during the time of the day when you have the least amount of energy, that's when you can schedule in the shorter and easier tasks. So by preparing your day in advance, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you know exactly what you need to do the second you wake up. You get up, you brush your teeth, maybe shower, have breakfast, and you leave the house to go to university, to the library, to school, wherever you need to go to start studying. And the idea is to live your life with purpose, with intention. So don't just let life pass you by. Tip number two, take regular breaks. So having a task list and scheduling your day the day before is all well and good, but what if your energy crashes and you're left feeling tired and lethargic? And this could just be a natural energy slump that you feel in the middle of the day, or it could be because you ate unhealthily at lunchtime, or maybe you ate a bit too much and you're in a food coma. Or it could be that you've been studying for so long that you're just running out of steam. And it would make sense because excessive focus exhausts the focus circuits in our brain, which leads to our energy draining. And as a result, our self-discipline starts to decrease, leaving us susceptible to procrastination and just getting distracted in general. So how do you prevent these drops in energy and what do you do if you find yourself suddenly drained of energy and unable to focus? Well, let's go over the first question first, how to prevent it from happening in the first place. So first off, depending on which study you read, the human brain can, it can focus for about 20 to 40 minutes before it starts to lose focus and it needs to take a break. So it's important to implement regular breaks into your long study sessions in order to stay focused for a longer period of time. The graph here shows how focused a student can stay over a period of time during a typical 60 minute study session. The blue line shows how students concentration starts high but it quickly falls over a 60 minute period. The red line shows his performance if he took a short break during the 60 minute study session. And as you can see, at the end of the 60 minute study session, his performance is significantly higher because he took a short break. The yellow line shows the student's performance if he took two short breaks within the 60 minute period. And as expected, his performance is even higher than if he took only just one break or if he didn't take any breaks at all. A great way of implementing structured breaks into your study session is by using the Pomodoro technique. It's where you have a 25 minute, 100% focused study period followed by a five minute break. And there are lots of really helpful apps in the app store that guide you along the way and help keep you on track. Just make sure when you do take breaks from your studying, try to get up and move around. Maybe you can go for a walk or grab a coffee. Try to do something that will give your eyes a rest and something that is completely unrelated to your studying. So if you do find yourself burned out with no energy to continue studying, what do you do? Well, if you're at home or even a quiet library, consider having a nap. Srinai Pillay, professor at Harvard Medical School wrote, when your brain is in a slump, your clarity and creativity are compromised. After a 10 minute nap, studies show that you become much clearer and more alert. But if it's a creative task you have in front of you, you will likely need a full 90 minutes for more complete brain refreshing. Your brain requires this longer time to make more associations and dredge up ideas that are in the nooks and crannies of your memory network. Tip number three, get enough sleep. And I can't stress how important this is, but it's still something that so many people and so many students still struggle with. So at university, I probably averaged somewhere around six to seven hours sleep a night, and it made life so much easier. Learning became so much easier. I could stay focused easier. I had better problem solving skills. I had improved memory recall. If I only managed to get four or five hours sleep that night, I definitely feel the difference in my studying and how well I could focus. And there are several studies that back this up. A 2014 study by researchers from Iowa State University surveyed 172 undergraduate students and their GPAs were obtained from the registrar's office. The research found a positive correlation between how much sleep a student was getting and their academic performance. So the more they slept, the more hours they got in per night, they got on average, the better their grades were. It also found that almost half of the undergraduate students were only getting five to six and a half hours of sleep, which is far below the seven to nine hours of sleep per night that the National Sleep Foundation advises for healthy adults. So if you do regularly feel tired throughout the day and you are struggling to get your seven to nine hours of sleep, there are a few things that you can do. Number one, 
Sleep and wake up at the same time seven days a week and this is probably the single most important thing you can do to improve the number of hours you sleep at night and once I realized this, once I started doing this, it helped me so so much. So I woke up at 4.45am every single morning and I was in bed by 9pm every single night, seven days a week, no exceptions, no excuses. And I also had a productive daily routine that helped me keep the schedule. And I made a more detailed video on my productive daily routine, as well as seven other habits of a 4.0 GPA student. You can click on the pop-out banner above to watch it. Number two, have a pre-sleep routine to help you wind down at the end of the day. So for me, it involved reading for 30 minutes or so before I eventually fell to sleep. For you, it might involve 10 minutes of meditation or a relaxing bath or shower, or maybe listening to classical music, turning off all your electrical devices, planning the tasks for the next day, or jetting down thoughts on a journal, or maybe just reading a book like me. Number three, exercise regularly, but not before bed. A 1997 study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association determined that exercise nearly halved the amount of time that it took to fall asleep and provided 41 minutes of sleep at night. And 41 minutes more of sleep a night is quite a big deal. So if you do do exercise though, don't do it before you sleep. So for me, if I exercise intensely at 9pm and plan to be in bed by 10pm, there's absolutely no way I'm going to fall asleep. I'll still be awake at 3am, 4am and maybe even 5am. And this is because of the stimulatory effects of exercise which increases alertness and hormones such as adrenaline. So being able to study for long periods of time while staying 100% focused is really a skill that needs to be honed in on and refined and it can take years to really get to where you're studying 14 hours a day relatively easily and it would take me about, I would say about one year of daily practice to go from not even being able to study for 30 minutes which is I know is really bad to being able to study for 14 hours without getting distracted. And I started doing 30 minutes a day at first, 30 minute chunks. And then I increased it to two hours of studying, then three hours, then 10 hours, then 12 hours, and finally 14 hours. And again, I can't stress this enough, I absolutely do not recommend studying 14 hours a day every day in the long term. There are so many other things that you need to be doing in order to stay healthy, like exercise, socializing, maybe you have to work a part-time job. So please do bear that in mind. And I recently posted a video on this channel on the seven daily habits of high performance students. You can click on the video here to watch it because those seven habits, if you implement them into your daily life, they will almost definitely help with allowing you to study for longer periods of time. And that video got really positive feedback. It got really positive comments. So I think you're going to love it and I'll see you over there.